How about we go to uh, Ray in Maryland joining us right now? What's up, Ray? Hey, now, Eddie. How's it going, man? Hey, bud. Hey, uh, just wanted to let you know I've got some uh, Truck Nation representation going on here in Maryland now. My, uh, my Truck Nation with Eddie Trunk uh, T-shirt came in the mail Monday, and it's awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have not talked about this on the air, but I've got a new merch store with a couple new designs. It's on, if you go to my site, eddietrunk.com, you can find it. I also posted the link, but I got a new a friend doing new merch for me. There's a couple new designs up there, some of the old ones as well. So thank you, Ray. I don't really do much pushing with the merch, but I appreciate you uh, representing. Thanks. Oh, definitely, man. And it's good quality. I got the one with the microphone with the flame, and it was only yeah. 15 bucks. Uh, only fifteen dollars. So you know, all you Trunk Nation people, go get one. Um, got a concert review, and not sure if you're gonna agree with me or well, you can't really agree or disagree. You weren't there. Uh, I went and saw Sticks uh, Saturday night in Selbyville, Delaware, and they had an opening band called uh, Jet Black Roses, I believe was their name, and they were pretty good um, rock band, all live. A uh, little bit of a country twist to it, but there were a couple of good songs in there that I really liked. And then it was the same four of us that went to see Rival Sons that previous Tuesday, which, of course, you know, I, I gave you my review on that. What can you say? And um, so we're the sticks comes out. My wife and I are like, oh, this is cool. We're jamming, you know. And then some of the three-part harmony sounded a little bigger than the last time I saw them and a little perfect much louder, and then the talking between songs was way different. I know you can use some effects, but I can, I'd can i almost bet they were enhanced a bit. But then the uh, keyboard player and also sing some lead, what's his name, is it Lawrence Gowan? Lawrence Gowan, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was doing, uh, and Tommy sounded like he was singing, you know, straight on. And uh, Lawrence was singing lead on a song up there and playing his keyboards, and then he had stopped singing uh, one part of a lead vocal, and the lead vocal kept saying something else. And he almost, because we were very close, it looked like he had a, oh, shit, and hit something, and it shut the lead vocal down that was still going in mid-word. And as the show went on, because my wife and I are looking at each other, it's like, man, we know Sticks to be kind of an all-live band. This is something that's not right here. And so I don't know if it's something recent, and I wasn't under the influence of anything, so don't think that. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, and then we're looking, and the the more the show went on, some of those those big choruses they just got way too perfect, way too loud. Didn't sound anything like like the parts that were seemed like if they were singing them live. And uh, we went to the concession stand. I ran into uh, a guy I didn't know, and he was saying the same thing and i'm like yeah there's something going on here we ended up leaving mid-show very disappointed especially coming off of rival sons you know four or five days early but ray ray let me ray what was your disappointment because you suspected that it wasn't real or was there something else going on that had you leave the show no, it was because we sus I suspected something wasn't real, as did my wife and her sister and her sister's husband. They, they're they not even as involved with the details like this that I am. Right. But but they were even noticing. It's like, it, I mean, it just sounded, and I know I've seen sticks before, and they're really good at the, they've been really good at that stuff. But this sounded way too perfect. And then when I saw Lawrence, like, have an old shit moment, and kind of hit something, and it shut down this lead vocal that was still continuing, and it shut it down in mid word. And yeah, it just, just there, right. some, there was something going on, Eddie. Well, Ray, I'm gonna, um, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I, like you said, thanks, Ray, for the call. I got to move on. I, I uh, obviously was not at the show, so obviously I can't comment about the show you saw. But Ray, um, all I can tell you is this: I would be extraordinarily surprised and also frankly extraordinarily disappointed if what if sticks was not truly live because i know them to be that and i know them to proudly be that 
to the point that I saw Sticks play once not long ago. And Tommy Shaw is outspokenly against all these bands that fake it. To the point that I saw him come out on the stage between songs and say, I just want everybody to know in this audience that what you're hearing on stage is 100% live and all in the original key. He said that on stage. Now, this is going back maybe 10, 15 years ago. Tommy was on this show recently. Again, audio and video on the app if you missed it. Tommy was on with us like not long ago. Tommy was like interesting. Tommy listens to this show, so he might be hearing it right now. But Tommy was um, actually listening to this show and reached out to me and said, hey, I'd love to come on. And we shot the shit like a couple months ago, uh, live on the air. So he, he is um, adamantly in our court about live being live. And they put a tremendous amount of work into what they do. Lawrence is a lead singer, of course, himself. The other guys in that band also sing very well. And I would be utterly shocked. Now, all that being said, have there been bands that have had that position and then they start to have issues and then change? Yes. I mean, the, the, the irony of ironies when it comes to KISS is there are countless videos or audio recordings where you have Gene and or Paul making fun of bands that use tracks or have other musicians covering for them when in fact they've been doing that forever. I mean, in the 80s, they had offstage keyboard players singing with them and playing keys. Now, of course, Doc McGee admits Paul Stanley sings to a track. So you see my point there. Uh, th that's a band that used to goof on the bands that do it. But of course, now when they can't do it anymore, but they still want to keep charging money and keep touring, then all of a sudden it's okay. So there is a precedent for that. But when it comes to sticks, I do not know of anything changing besides that band being completely live. And I saw them play at Rock Island this year as well, early this year. And, and, we ta and Tommy was just on. We just talked about it. And he was just saying, I mean, we, you, you, so, so yeah, so, so I don't know what was going on. I don't know what you heard or didn't hear. Again, to me, the accusation of a band faking it is an extraordinarily serious charge. And it should be. And it is. Unfortunately, now, because we're in bizarro land where everybody just accepts everything, but to me, it's an extraordinarily important, uh, serious charge. And I think that, you know, before I could ever say that about a band, I'd need to know something was going on for a fact. Or that the band admits it. You know, we now have an admission from Kiss's manager. We now have an admission from Blackie Lawless. Blackie was on this show just a few weeks ago talking about it. People still are trying to decipher what that was. But here's the bottom line. If you know, if, 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 if the bands that are admitting it, for years Motley Crue admitted it, then when Mick hit them with it, they have backtracked from it. But if you know bands are doing it and you're still going, again, it, and, and oh, it doesn't bother me, then again, the train's off the tracks, folks. It's over, over. Because like, why would anybody play live if they realize fans don't care? It's, it's madness to me, but... And that happens.